Hello everyone, my name is Tim Abbott, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco. And in this video series, I'm going to show you how to configure posture assessment in Cisco's Identity Services Engine. In the previous videos, I've covered posture conditions, remediations, requirements, policy, and now we need to move on to client provisioning. So let's get started. Before we begin and jump right into the UI, there's a couple of things I want to point out. There are some steps that we need to take when we're doing client provisioning configuration steps. The first thing we're going to do is configure a posture profile. Next, we're going to need to download the AnyConnect agent from Cisco.com. That is going to be a requirement uh, if you're going to use the AnyConnect agent, and you will have to have an entitlement to download that software from Cisco since it is not included with Identity Services Engine. Also of note, in the very first video, uh, when I showed you the lab topology, I referenced AnyConnect 4.5. From here on, I'm going to be using AnyConnect 4.8 instead. The next thing we need to do is download the compliance module from Cisco. Then we need to configure uh, the AnyConnect profile. And then lastly, we tie it all together with the client provisioning policy. So let's begin. Okay, to begin uh, setting up our client provisioning policy, the first thing we're going to do is log into ICE, and we've done that. So let's go now to Work Centers, and under the Posture Work Center, we'll go to Client Provisioning. Over here on the left-hand side, we'll go ahead and click on Resources. And the first thing we want to do is configure a posture profile. To do that, we're going to click Add, and then we're going to select a AnyConnect posture profile. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is give it a name. So we're going to do that real quick. Posture and then P-R-O-F for short. Okay, as you can see, there are a number of parameters that you can manipulate for this profile. And this basically dictates how um, any connect is going to behave from a posture perspective. I'm not going to go through each and every one. However, I will point out some that I think you should uh, be aware of, some of, the, some of the important ones, okay? First one is the remediation timer. Uh, so there's a default global setting of four minutes. If you want to manipulate that value, um, you absolutely can here in this field. Four minutes, some may, some may feel that that's short. Uh, some may feel that um, it's just right. And if you want to increase it, you absolutely can do that. Okay. If you want to disable the UI, uh, you can enable what's called stealth mode. And basically what that is, is instead of seeing the, uh, any, uh, the AnyConnect uh, window for the, um, the UI for the software, you can actually disable that and uh, you end users will not see anything. Uh, if you do use stealth mode, you can, uh, you can uh, allow notifications at the same time. So if you do enable stealth mode, but want notifications, you can enable that value. Okay. And you have the ability to enable or disable the rescan button. Okay. Another one of interest is periodic probing. And this basically tells AnyConnect how often it should check to see if it can still connect to ICE. Okay. So um, three times 10 minutes. So just keep in mind that this value is times 10. Okay. So if you've got three here to be every, uh, every 30 minutes. All right. Uh, some other things that you want to be, maybe be aware of. Um, if you're going to be doing VLAN changes based upon posture assessment or compliance status, Okay, these are some of the, the values that you're going to want to manipulate. Okay, uh, VLAN detection interval you know, depends on how, how often or how quickly you want the agent to detect if there's been a VLAN change. You can manipulate that value in seconds. Okay, uh, some of the other things that you're going to definitely want to do um, for sure is um, fill out these two fields here for sure. One is the discovery host, and since I've got one, ICE instance in my environment. I'm going to go ahead and put ISE-1.demo.local for my lab. And then the one field that you absolutely must manipulate, as you can see by the asterisk here, is going to be the, the server name rules. Okay. Uh, to make it very simple, we'll just go ahead and put an asterisk in there, even though it's I've only got one ICE instance, we'll just put the asterisk. But um, if you want more information about a lot of these fields, I want to call out that um, we do give uh, detailed explanations of what all these parameters do in the administration guide. Okay, uh, you can access that administration guide very easily by going up here into the right hand corner and launching page level help and it will take you right to the section in the administration guide that pertains to this screen that you're currently on. Okay, so those are the main ones that I, uh, I wanted to show out show you uh, and explain to you. So if you have more interest in uh, manipulating custom messages um, and grace period messages and things of that nature. Here are some parameters that you can manipulate. But for uh, for the sake of this video, I think we're good at this point. So we'll go ahead and click submit. 
Okay. So as you can see, we've got Win10 Posture Profile configured. The next step is to um, upload an agent. So we need to upload any connect into ICE. So um, as I said in the beginning of the video, um, any connect um, is its own product, its own piece of software. And as a result, it is not included with um, the Identity Services Engine software. So what we had to do was actually go to cisco.com and download it uh, to our local machine. So that's exactly what we're, we're getting ready to do here. So agent resources from local disk. We're going to select the category. It's a Cisco provided package. And then we're going to go ahead and browse to our downloads. We're going to select any connect. We're going to open that. And once it gets op opened up by ICE, you can see the, um, the name, the description, the version, all that fun stuff. Okay, so now we've got any connect loaded. We can then move on to the next step, which is the AnyConnect compliance module. Okay, so after the AnyConnect software has been uploaded and the checksum against the software has been performed and you, you validated the checksum meets the checksum provided on cisco.com, we now have AnyConnect uh, loaded into ICE. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got our posture profile so far and we've got AnyConnect loaded. The next thing we wanna do is download the compliance module from cisco.com. So this actually is included with the software. However, it's not during the installation. So you are entitled to it. Uh, we just don't include it in the installation software. So you can download load this from cisco.com. So we're gonna go ahead and select agent resources from Cisco site. Okay, so once it has downloaded all of the available uh, resources from cisco.com, you can see a number of different packages that are available for you to, to download. So for this, we're actually going to select the Windows Compliance Module. Okay, so we're going to use 4.x. If you remember in our conf configuration in previous videos, we referenced 4.x, so that's exactly what we're going to use here. And then we're going to go ahead and click Save. Okay, once it's downloaded the Compliance Module from Cisco.com, now we can move on to the next step, which is the AnyConnect configuration. So we're gonna go up to Add, and then we're gonna select AnyConnect configuration. So the first thing we wanna do is select our package, and then we have with our AnyConnect agent 4.8. And the next thing we wanna do is give it a name. So we're gonna call this Win10AC config. Actually, best practice dictates that uh, you're going to want to do a version. So if you if you by chance tend to change any connect versions periodically, you'll know which uh, which configuration ties to which um, version of any connect. So that way you're not having to guess and go back and look through um, configuration profiles and etc. Okay. So we've got the package. We've got the configuration name. The next thing we need to do is select the compliance module. We just downloaded that from Cisco.com. So we'll select that. Okay. The module selection. So this dictates um, the various modules that can be installed uh, with AnyConnect when ICE provisions the endpoint. Okay, so by default, we're going to be doing posture. Okay, optionally, we don't need VPN, but optionally, you can do VPN, you can uh, do uh, AnyConnect NAM, we can web security, AMP, posture, ASA posture, which is host scan, uh, network visibility, you can do umbrella. So a number of different. Um, modules that you can add on to any connect. So it's a very versatile piece of software and, and, and ICE can help you provision endpoints with all of these great uh, security features. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is select the ICE posture profile and we configured that earlier. So we've got that selected. So if you, you selected any of these modules here, you're going to have to have the appropriate profile in one of these drop downs. So for everyone you've checked here, you're going to want to make sure you select it down here. Okay. The localization bundle, if you're going to manipulate any connect in that way, you have the ability to do that, okay? If you are moving from one any connect version to another, this section allows you to um, manipulate how the upgrade process will work, okay? Um, so go ahead and read through that. If you need to move from any connect 4.5 to 4.8 or 4.7 to 4.8 or what have you, and gives you the ability to allow the endpoint user to defer the update and things of that nature. Okay, so um, we give you all of those options. All right, so for this example, I think we're pretty much good. We'll go ahead and click Submit. 
Alrighty, so we have gotten the posture profile configured. We've got AnyConnect uploaded. We downloaded the compliance module. We have our AnyConnect configuration, and the last step is to actually configure the client provisioning policy. So to do that, we're going to go ahead to the left hand, left hand side here. Click that. Uh, uh, wrong one. I clicked the portal. Um, you can actually manipulate the client provisioning portal if you want to customize that with corporate branding, what have you. You can actually do that from here. But here, clicking uh, this this link right here will give you the um, the uh, client provisioning policy. All right. So we, as you can see, we've got a bunch of them already built in, and all we really need to do is just modify the one that is already configured for us. So we've got Windows here. Uh, the identity group, we're not going to use anything um, particular for that. The operating system, we've got Windows. And what we're going to do here in particular is actually select Windows 10 specifically. And then if we needed to add any other conditions, we can. But uh, we're not going to for this example. What we need to do now is select the agent. So from this drop down here, you can see the package that we just configured, which is Win10 Any Connect 4.8 configuration. We select that. And if you want to do any native supplicant provisioning for 802.1x or what have you, you can go ahead and select those there. But uh, that's not required for posture assessment. And then we go ahead and click Done. And that's all there is to it. All we need to do is click Save. And we are ready to move on to the next video, which is basically putting it into effect in access policy. I hope you enjoyed this video on posture configuration. Uh, we're talking about client provisioning in this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about tying it all together in access policy. So hopefully you'll join me for that video and thanks for watching.